Hello. I've made a few videos now comparing vinyl releases with CD releases of the same music. And the reason is that sometimes the vinyl releases are more dynamic than the CD versions. They've either been mastered differently for vinyl or had an entirely different master sent off for vinyl pressing. And this interests me because of the irony of a format with much better technical specifications not sounding as good as a much older format that has within it many limitations and restrictions. Now, I'm not going to say anything in this video about whether vinyl is better or worse than CD. There are people out there who love the sound of vinyl. There are people out there like me who love the format, who love the large discs, the artwork, the feel of it, putting a needle on the record but have problems with some of the technical aspects. For me, it's end of side distortion. But that's not what this video is about. Because some vinyl releases do genuinely have better dynamics than the digital releases of the same material, people have got very interested in this. And in particular, people are using this tool, the TT Dynamic Range Meter, to measure CDs and the vinyl versions and upload to there's an unofficial online database and comparing the numbers. The TT meter gives you an idea of the peak to loudness ratio of a piece of music. It does give you a good indication of how squashed a digital file is when you measure it, how loud the music has been pushed onto that CD. However, what I'm going to show you in this video is that you can't use it to make those same judgments about vinyl. And the piece of music I'm going to use to demonstrate this to you is by the fantastic Artemis, called Love of the Game. And I'm going to start by analysing the CD version, which registers DR8, which means, roughly speaking, the peak to loudness ratio of this song is about 8 dBs. And then in the same way, I'm going to measure the same piece of music ripped from the vinyl release of this album, and it's reading DR12. So the vinyl version has an extra 4 dBs, apparently, of peak to loudness ratio. Apparently a 50% increase over the CD. And that seems to suggest that the vinyl is more dynamic. And those are the kind of judgments that people make when they're measuring the vinyl. Just to quickly deal with a possible concern, I've also got a declicked version of the vinyl release, which we can measure, and that also registers DR12. So any difference that the TT meter thinks it's seeing is not due to any crackles or clicks or pops on the vinyl. So let's look at the waveforms of these two versions, which is another way that people like to analyse these things. And at the top here we have the vinyl, and down here we have the CD release. And immediately you can see that that seems to back up the judgement of the TT offline meter. We can see lots more peaks and spikes in the vinyl waveform, whereas the CD version has this characteristic flat top that people like to refer to as brick walling. Um, it's typical of something that has been through a digital limiter to control the peaks. So now let's take a listen to these two versions and see how they read on the real-time TT meter up here. So we'll start with the CD. And we can see that the real-time TT meter is confirming the judgment of the offline meter. It's averaging around a DR reading of 8 dBs. The difference between the peak and the loudness, actually the RMS level, is about 8 dBs. So now let's listen to the same section from the vinyl. And again, the meter seems to confirm what the waveform says and what the offline meter said. Certainly that has a DR value of 10 and there you can see it pushing up to about 12. So, case closed, right? The vinyl release of this CD has been differently mastered and has better dynamics. 
has a higher peak to loudness ratio? Well, no. That is not the case for this release. And the reason that I know that it's not the case is that I mastered this song. And this vinyl master was made from the same digital file that was used to create this CD master, including the digital brick wall limiting. So when this master was played out to make the vinyl production master, the waveform looked like the one on the bottom here. And in fact, personally, when I flick between the two, I can hear slight differences in the sound, slight EQ differences. There's an image shift. There's a little bit more top in the CD version, but they sound very, very similar. Let me just play that to you. Here's the CD again. And here's the same section from the vinyl. Flick back to the CD. Back to the vinyl. Back to the CD. Now, they don't sound identical by any means. The CD sounds a little bit crisper. There's maybe a little less warmth overall, perhaps you might say. Lots of the things that we typically think about vinyl in comparison with CD. But just to repeat, one thing I can say guaranteed is that there is no magical extra ingredient in that vinyl version over the CD version. They were made from the same file. And actually, I don't know about you, but to me... The CD sounds ever so slightly more dynamic. I feel there's a little bit more punch, a little bit more transient impact, even though the waveform looks flatter and less peaky. So what are we hearing? What is the TT meter measuring? And what are we seeing in those waveforms? Well, the honest answer is, I don't know. When you zoom in on the waveforms and compare similar areas... In lots of ways they look very similar. Sometimes where the CD signal is particularly loud in comparison to the vinyl or the peak level is particularly high in comparison to the vinyl I should say more accurately it seems like you're seeing some extra peak information at the top of the vinyl wave that isn't there in the CD. The CD here is a little bit flatter and on other examples, you see that much more clearly. Sometimes you can see very obviously that the CD waveform has been clipped and that the vinyl waveform actually has a horizontal slope where there is a flat slope on the CD. Now, as I say, I don't know why these differences are there. There are so many variables involved in getting from a digital file to a vinyl cut. It could be something to do with the properties of the lathe that was used to cut it. It could be something to do with the fact that it's going through an analogue signal chain to get to the lathe. Even more likely, in my opinion, is that it's to do with the physical properties of the vinyl and or with the record deck that was used to play the file. This vinyl rip hasn't come from anything special. It was sent to me by a member of the band once they had the vinyl test pressing, so it was made on a good but not exceptional vinyl turntable and it seems very likely to me that the quality and properties of the stylus and cartridge 
the tone arm and the analog electronics in the replay system will all have a part to play in the way that the vinyl sounds and the way that that waveform looks. And of course, I'm not saying that this proves that vinyl is not more dynamic than CD in some cases. Sometimes it is. What I'm saying is you can't prove that the vinyl is more dynamic than the CD by looking at the numbers. This is an example where we know that any differences between the vinyl and the CD have had virtually no influence on the sound and are not an example of the vinyl being or sounding intrinsically better. They're just something to do with the changes made to the signal between the digital file and replay on a record player. In audible terms, it makes very little difference and any difference that's there, whilst you may prefer it, isn't, in a technical sense, better. And yet, it's giving numbers that are much larger on the TT meter and a waveform that looks much more spiky and dynamic when you look at it. So I'm afraid, if you're trying to decide whether to buy the latest release of a piece of music as a digital file or on vinyl, going to the online dynamic range database, the TT meters database, is not going to give you reliable information. Quite aside from anything else, you think about all those variables that I mentioned. The only way to do a fair comparison between different bits of vinyl would be to use exactly the same replay system in each case. Some people I know are doing vinyl rips, plugging the headphone output of their amplifier into the line input of their computer. That's probably going to sound fine, but in terms of impedance matching and a whole host of other factors, it definitely will not give you a waveform that you can compare in any sensible way. So we're back to the usual situation. If you want to know whether a vinyl release sounds better than a CD release or not, your best bet is to go out and try and find that information. Interviews, sleeve notes that maybe describe the process of making that vinyl, or better yet, to listen. And if you're a vinyl fan and you love the qualities of vinyl, you may prefer to listen to the vinyl release of a song, even in a case like this, where the changes are a technicality rather than of any real benefit. But it's not valid to try and prove that vinyl is more dynamic than a digital release using the TT meter. And just as one final point, it is of course valid to compare different digital formats but even there you need to be careful because if the reading has been made from an mp3 file or some other kind of lossy codec, that too will have changed the waveform in unpredictable ways and typically will add an extra point or two to the readings that you get. So really we have to conclude the only sensible way to use the TT meter is comparing uncompressed lossless digital files with each other. And even then, I think you should treat them with a pinch of salt. The TT meter is great. I use it all the time. But it's quite a blunt instrument. And you have to interpret the results that it gives you carefully. And make sure you use some common sense too. I hope you found that interesting or useful. There's plenty more posts like this over on my website, productionadvice.co.uk. So please subscribe to the YouTube channel and take a look over there if you're interested. My name is Ian Shepherd. Thanks for listening.